Hey everyone, how's it going? Today is a special one because I have got my hands on a Raspberry Pi 5. Now I want to see what improvements the Pi 5 has over the Pi 4 in terms of emulation because I like to use my Raspberry Pis for, for playing games. And uh, so far, all of the videos that I've seen from big tubers who got their hands on pre-release models, um, they only ever seem to show things that the Raspberry Pi 4 could already do. Like, ooh, look at this, the Raspberry Pi 5 can play PSP games, or it can play Game Boy Advance games. Like, what the hell? I mean, the Raspberry Pi 4 can already do that. So I wanted to see what it can do that the Pi 4 already can't do. So I'm going to be looking at a couple of systems like uh, the GameCube, the Wii, uh, the Sega Saturn, and uh, and I'm going to look at some arcade games that were either unplayable on the Pi 4 or just badly performing. Uh, so um, let's have a look. So first of all, I'll just explain that what I did, because there's no there's no official 64-bit RetroPie image yet for the Raspberry Pi 5, what I did is, is basically install the uh, Raspberry Pi Bookworm 64-bit OS first of all and then I installed RetroPie on top of that. Um, so Re RetroPie just is, is just acting like a front end and I was then able to install the Libretro uh, Dolphin emulator for Wii and GameCube and the Beatles Saturn emulator. Um, and then I also, I mean, they didn't, didn't, they didn't take long to 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 compile. I think it took uh, 18 minutes for Dolphin and two minutes for Beetle Saturn. And uh, and then I had to also compile uh, the current Libretro main, which is the at this time the .260 ROM set. And uh, that took about two and a half hours, which is at least an hour quicker than it would take on a Raspberry Pi 4. So first of all we're gonna have a look at the GameCube. And uh, my buddy Golden Shellback asked me if I could try a Zelda game. He wanted to he wanted me to try the Wind Waker. So here it is. Okay, so right off the bat it's looking pretty good. As you can see, it's about 30 frames per second. And as I understand it, the GameCube, um, most games on the GameCube only ran at 30 frames anyway. And I think there are a few, there are a few games that took advantage of uh, 60 frames, but we'll have a look at one of those afterwards. But Wind Waker on this title screen, it's looking pretty good. 30 frames per second, uh, I mean I never had a GameCube, I've never played this on real hardware, but it kind of looks like what I'm expecting. Let's, uh, let's start a game and see what it looks like in gameplay. Okay, so this is the um, like the the introduction video sequence that gives us the story, the exposition. Well, that's that's still holding its frame rate, uh, but then it is just two D pictures, <laughs> so not really very taxing. Let's skip it. Oh wait, none of the buttons do anything. Oh man, this is why I hate Nintendo. Like, you have to sit through 10 or 20 minutes of unskippable introduction and just reading stuff before you're able to actually take control of anyone in a game. Um, I, you know, if I, if I wanted to do all this reading, I wouldn't have bought a game, I would have bought a book. Okay, 
I'm going to spare you this. I'm just going to fast forward through this and get to the game. Okay. Oh man, that took ages. Right. Um, okay, so let's control this little guy. Yeah, he seems... I mean, it's it's still holding 30 frames per second, give or take. Seems pretty good. Let's see if we can do some like activity. Let's uh, let's go to the guy who teaches us how to sword fight and see what he he has to say. Yeah, so all in all, this is looking pretty good. So 30 frames per second is pretty much what I was expecting. It looks as smooth as, as I would expect from 30 frames. I haven't seen any glitches. Um, 
Yeah, this looks good, so hopefully this is what we can expect from GameCube across the board. Let's try something else. So one of my other buddies, Prince Rakim, suggested F-Zero. He said F-Zero would be the one to test the capabilities of the emulator on the Pi 5. Now, F-Zero is one of those games that is in, that is uh, 60 frames, that uses 60 hertz. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so this isn't looking good. This uh, isn't even hitting 30 frames, let alone 60. It sounds really bad, sounds pretty choppy. But, um, I mean, that, that doesn't bode well for the, for the actual main game. But let's, let's see if we can get into a game and uh, see if this gets any better in gameplay. Gosh, on the, on this screen, I can't even see some of the options. It's um, I'm sure there's some stuff missing. I'm just pressing buttons to get through. All right, so now we're on the track. Okay, let's get started. Wait, what happened? Well, uh, what am I under the track? None of, none of the buttons are doing. None of the buttons are doing anything. I'm stuck. I can't do anything. Okay, so uh, I guess F Zero is a bit of a bust. Okay, so. What I'm getting here is that well, many games might be all right, like Zelda, um, The Wind Waker. That um, that seems okay. Games like that might be all right, but games like F Zero, which are probably a bit more demanding, um, aren't going to work. Okay, let's try another one. So. My buddy Wiggy suggested that I try um, Rogue Leader, the Star Wars game, because it's got a lot of a lot of cutscenes and uh, lots of potential resolution changes. See how um, see how Dolphin copes with that on the Raspberry Pi Five. Okay, why? Why aren't those disappearing? Ah, oh, man, I think I think it's frozen. <laughs> it's frozen. Well, I can get into the I can get into the retro arch menus. Ah, oh, but I can't get out. I can't get back to the game. I've... Right, I'm gonna have to quit. Okay, so that's GameCube. It's a bit of a mixed bag there. Some games are gonna work. Some games aren't. Now, I deliberately picked uh, two games in particular that I thought would be a bit of a test. I'll just point out as well that I haven't really changed any of the settings except for some of the controls, just to make sure that I can control the game. But I haven't tried to do any kind of um, setup on refining or optimizing the games. So this is just Dolphin as it comes, kind of raw off the bat. So there might be something that can be done in the core settings to improve some stuff, but I don't know what that is yet. So this is kind of the experience that you're going to get straight away. Okay, so let's move on to the Sega Saturn. And the first game on Saturn I'm going to try is House of the Dead 2. 
Now, uh, House of the Dead 2 is a light gun shooter, because uh, I'm a big fan of light gun games, so I'm going to be testing a lot of light gun games today. But unfortunately, the Sindon light gun software doesn't seem to work on the uh, Bookworm OS just yet. So hopefully in the near future that'll be resolved, but at the moment I'm going to have to test these using either a control pad or a mouse. So for the Saturn games I'm going to use the control pad, uh, and then for the Wii and arcade games I'm going to be using a mouse. Uh, so forgive me for that. But here we go, here's House of the Dead 2. I'm going to skip ahead to the beginning of the gameplay. are still inside. Save them. Help! All right, so this is looking pretty good. So right from the start, right from the boot up, um, all the way through to this point, I've got solid 50 frames per second. So this is a European a copy of the game so it's gonna be at 50 Hertz anyway so 50 frames per second seems to be full speed uh, and as you can see uh, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it the gameplay is absolutely fine all of the animation is fine I can't see any glitches uh, this looks good so I'll, I'll just play this through a little bit just to see if anything happens and um, yeah enjoy this for a few minutes Alright, House of the Dead 2 on Sega Saturn seems to be perfect. Okay, I want to try something that um, hopefully might be a little bit more taxing, might be a little bit more um, more heavy duty, and, uh, and I'll try uh, an American game. So, something that's at 60 frames per second, hopefully. So I'm going to try Virtua Cop 2, that's the best I can come up with at short notice. And uh, here we go, Virtua Cop 2, the North American version. Virtua Cop 2. Let's go. Okay, I've skipped ahead again just so we can get into the gameplay and so far it's been a solid 60 frames per second right from the get-go and it's maintaining that. This is pretty good. I'm really excited for Sega Saturn. See, on Sega Saturn on the Raspberry Pi 4, well, you could load games but it was like watching a slideshow. They didn't work very well at all. Uh, but I'm happy to say on the Raspberry Pi 5, Sega Saturn is absolutely perfect. Okay, let's uh, let's just watch a little bit of Virtual Cop 2 for a few minutes, and then we'll try something else.
All right, let's try one more on Saturn. Uh, so I'm going to try Chaos Control, uh, the European version. I don't think it was ever released in North America. There was a Japanese one, well, two, in fact, uh, but uh, they're obviously in Japanese. So I've got the European version. Um, and the reason I chose Chaos Control is because I wanted to see how Beatles Saturn on Raspberry Pi 5 coped with like full motion video. And basically this game is just completely 100% full motion video. So not only the cutscenes, but also all the gameplay. All the gameplay stuff is full motion video. So the all the scenery is pre-rendered 3D landscapes. Um, and even so much as the enemies that fly towards you are also part of the pre-rendered video. Uh, and so when you shoot one, they get covered by this sprite cloud until they go off screen. It's quite an interesting way of doing it. So, yeah, so you get the illusion of a full 3D kind of video game. But, uh, but actually what you're watching is just a, an interactive video. But so far this seems to be coping well as well. I'm getting the full 50 frames per second. And I don't see any glitches at all. So that's Chaos Control. Alright, so Sega Saturn is looking pretty awesome. I'm really pleased with that. That's one of the systems that I was really hoping to be able to play on Raspberry Pi 5. So that's great. Saturn is 100%. Let's move on to something else. Okay, now let's just take a casual look at the Nintendo Wii, uh, which runs in the Dolphin emulator, which is the same emulator that uh, the GameCube runs in. Uh, so, first up, we're going to take a look at Link's crossbow training, just to see how how that goes. That's a pretty standard kind of shooting game. Pretty simple and straightforward. I can play that easily with a mouse. And uh, let's give that a go. All right, so this looks really, really good. Um, it seems to be getting around 30 frames per second, and I'm told that uh, that was all the Wii did anyway. I'm not really surprised by that, to be honest. But um, I don't see much in the way of glitches. It seems to be running absolutely fine. Um, yeah, everything looks and sounds good, and uh, the only disappointing thing about this is the uh, kind of the, the way the mouse is, is kind of hypersensitive. Um, I'm optimistic that uh, I'll be able to use a light gun with it, but I'm worried that maybe it is definitely mouse control rather than kind of light gun control, because a mouse has relative movement as opposed to a light gun, which is more like a touchscreen, which is absolute coordinates. Um, if it's if it's more mouse-like with a light gun, then it might not um, might not go so well with a light gun, but uh, that remains to be seen. But for now, Link's crossbow training, at least on the Dolphin emulator on the Raspberry Pi 5, is absolutely brilliant. Let's move on to something else. 
my friends wanted me to try House of the Dead 3, so I happen to have um, I happen to have House of the Dead 2 and 3 and House of the Dead Overkill on on disc, so um, I wasn't able to rip my discs, so I had to download them uh, just so I could play them here, but that's a little bit of a legal grey area, we'll, we'll see. I do intend to rip my own discs, but for the purposes of these tests. So let's try out House of Dead 3, first of all, and see how that goes. Alright, this seems to be uh, trying to run at 60 frames per second, uh, and it seems to be coping really well. Right, at this point I uh, didn't really know how to reload, I couldn't find the button for it, but I uh, realised very quickly that I had to shoot off screen. Uh, so I had to move the mouse off the edge to and click to be able to do that. So I'm told that Wii games uh, are a bit like GameCube games in the fact that there are some games that will run at 60 frames, um, but the vast majority will probably run at 30. So this is going to be one of those 60 frames. Let's see how it goes. We can't let everyone's death be in vain. Hurry! All right, I see a, a couple of little glitches there. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Stay out of my way. Okay, so that wasn't terrible. That was that was pretty good actually, considering it was trying to run at 60 frames per second instead of uh, what I was expecting, 30. Um, it did really well. There were a few little glitches here and there, but that's certainly very playable. Uh, before I leave this um, this this game, I'm gonna try House of the Dead 2 on the same on the same disc because um, they come bundled together. So I'm gonna try House of the Dead 2 and just see how that looks. Yeah, you know, what with my uh, familiarity with the Dreamcast version and all, and we'll see if if it looks if it looks as good. We're meeting G over there. What? Please be safe, G. Reload. How could anyone do this? G. James, I tried. Don't. Underestimate the enemy. James, take this. <laughs> Harry and Amy are coming to back us up. Hurry! Go! Thanks, G. No! No! Ah! I don't want to do it! 
die. My God. Don't come. Don't come. Go away. Go away. Please, help it. Don't kill me. No. No. Help me. All right, I'm getting the same sort of... Um, situation is with House of the Dead 3, naturally, because they're on the same disc and they probably run in, in exactly the same way. Um, so it is, isn't is perfect, but it's very good and very playable. But yeah, that's pretty good. Let's uh, move on to something else. Let's try something that might be a little bit more taxing. I want to give House of the Dead Overkill a try. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, I'm just skipping through the menus trying to get into the game and I just realised that I didn't um, put the frame counter on the screen at this time. But I do put it up for the gameplay, so just uh, we'll just uh, sit tight for a moment. A monster made them allies. All right, so this isn't a good sign. This is trying to play at 24 frames per second. And you can tell it sounds really slow. It's very stuttery. So it's definitely too slow. And this is just the intro like video clip. So if this is bad, how the, how's the game going to be? Alright, so this is an improvement. It's playing at about 25 frames per second, give or take. I think it's a bit wobbly. It looks closer to normal speed, but not quite there. So I reckon the game is supposed to be running at 30. But um, can't quite make it. There's quite a lot going on, I think. It's playable, but its I don't think it's a pleasant experience. But... Um, We'll keep this running a little bit just so you can get a more complete picture of what it's like, but considering it's running at about 25 frames when it should be 30, it's a bit slow. And just by the way, this particular sequence is supposed to be slow because when you shoot one of those green things, it slows everything down for a few seconds to give you like a little bit of a, a, reaction, a reaction boost. But, but this is how it's normally playing. 26 frames per second out of 30. Yeah, I don't think this is a particularly great experience. But again, it's not terrible. Maybe, maybe an overclock. I mean, this Pi isn't overclocked. It's just running stock. Maybe an overclock, maybe a few settings optimizations, and this might be, uh, this might be pretty good. So this is a possibility, it's not 100% cert though. Okay, that's enough of the Wii. Um, so it's another mixed bag again, much like GameCube, funnily enough, as they run in the same emulator, Dolphin. Uh, so what, with the GameCube, we had uh, we had some games that ran really, really well, and we had some games that were shocking. And again, with the Wii, we've got some games like Link's Crossbow Training that run perfectly, that run really, really well. And then you've got some games that run almost perfectly, like the House of the Dead 2 and 3. And then you've got some games that don't run quite well enough, but with some tweaking, with maybe the overclock, maybe some optimization. Um, they might be able to run really well and again there might even be some games that are shocking which I haven't touched on but uh, again a mixed bag so don't expect everything to work well but uh, you've probably got a good chance but that remains to be seen as well to see how development goes in the future okay so let's move on to something else let's try some arcade games that uh, don't run very well on the Pi 4 
All right, so let's have a look at the arcade games. The first game I'm going to try is Time Crisis. Now, these games have been chosen because they're games that don't run very well on the Pi 4, so we want to see what kind of uh, advantage the Pi 5 gives us. So Time Crisis is... Um, it's Rachel, the daughter it's been a little bit of a white whale Asia. on the Pi 4. It's kind of got to a point where... Rachel. where we can actually load it, but it, but you can't play it. And actually, this doesn't look too bad. This is a this is a pretty good, promising start, but it's not quite this right. Will soon be mine. <laughs> ah, the taste of revenge is sweet. You can hear that it's it's like the sound isn't. It's trying, but it can't ca catch up. It's a bit slow, but you can see it's running at somewhere between 45 and 55 frames per second, which isn't isn't perfect. I mean, the graphics look great, um, but it's just not quite there. It's almost there, and I think maybe with an overclock, this this will be perfect. But as it stands, it's just a little bit too slow. Yeah, I mean, this is playable, but it's not ideal. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's an unpleasant experience, like with, say, uh, How's the Dead Overkill on Dolphin. But, um, but it is playable. But I do expect that maybe with, with quite a lot of stuff going on in the screen at once, it might just slow down. The fact that this, this frame rate is quite variable tells me that it's quite dependent on on how much is happening at once. So, yeah, so this is okay, but not perfect. But I think an overclock will probably iron that out quite nicely. Okay, that's enough of Time Crisis. Let's try, um, just for fun, let's try Time Crisis 2 just to see what kind of uh, difference we get. Now, I wasn't optimistic about this one, but uh, I just wanted to get a kind of a feel for what we can expect. All right, so this is the um, kind of the initialization screen when you turn on the arcade machine. Okay, it's showing 26 frames per second, which I imagine I imagine it's probably supposed to be 60. Now, if this is just the initialization screen, um, what are we going to expect from from the actual game? This doesn't bode well. I'll um, I'll fast forward through this to to spare you the agony. Oh boy, okay, so we've reached the title screen at last, then it's uh, oh, 15 frames per second, and it's, I have to put four coins in, and it's quite, it's quite a lot of button mashing just to get all those coins in. But at least it doesn't take long to get to the game, although this is the introduction cutscene. This is terrible. This is 15 frames per second. This is slow motion. <laughs> All right, I'll skip ahead. So this is the little bit of gameplay on Time Crisis 2 on the Pi 5. Oh my goodness, this is awful. You, you, can't, you can't miss. Uh, at least there's that. But I think it's safe to say that this is just really um, not going to happen on the Pi 5. Not unless like this game gets seriously optimised, which I doubt will happen. Um, 
the uh, main development community are not interested in optimizing games to make them run better. They're only interested in accurate emulation uh, most of the time. So um, they just want the game to behave the way it would on an arcade machine. And I don't think an overclock is going to straighten this out. Yeah, I think Time Crisis 2 is is off the table. All right, that's enough of that. All right, let's go for um, Point Blank 3. So Point Blank 3 does run on the Pi 4, um, but in in current MAME, it uh, doesn't run very well. It'll only run in an earlier, much earlier version of MAME, which has been optimized um, to be able to run well on these kinds of systems. But in in straight up normal mame current mame it just it just doesn't play very well. And to begin with, this looks really good. Looks like we're getting 60 frames per second. The audio is smooth. The animations are smooth. Let's just try a few rounds. Let's do let's play a a screen. Let's play four stages just to see see how the gameplay is. Well, there were no problems there. That was absolutely perfect. Bit of a mouse button clicking frenzy. I, I really do hate playing light gun games with a mouse. I hate seeing light gun games played with a mouse. Um, but uh, I'm unfortunately at the moment I'm going to have to do that just for the sake of the test of the game. So I'm sorry about that. There's a little blip there, but I didn't notice it when I was playing it. Okay, third game. Hit the bowl with one shot. Okay, so this this kind of game is really where you need a light gun. With a mouse, it's like you just click on it. With a mouse, it's far too easy. With a light gun, yeah, there's a chance you might miss, so... But yeah, I'm very happy with the way Point Blank is uh, is holding up. Point Blank 3. Okay, let's just play this fourth one and uh, and then we'll try something else. Now, this particular one is quite hard to play with the mouse. I think I'd do much better with a light gun on, on this kind of round, but... <laughs> I failed. <laughs> Alright, that, that was good. Point Blank 3 is uh, brilliant. Really happy with Point Blank 3. Right, let's try Invasion the Abductors. This was a suggestion by Luther Gond. Actually, most of these main games were suggestions by Luther Gond. Um, Invasion the Abductors is one, again, that plays on the Pi. It actually is not terrible, but it plays uh, quite slow, at quite a slow speed, something like, uh, if I was to hazard a guess, maybe 50%, somewhere between 50 and maybe 75%, somewhere in that range. It's kind of almost attainable on the Pi 4, but uh, this looks good. It says 56 frames. Nice planet. I think I'll save it for a price. Easy money. 
yeah, I mean, it's 56, 57 frames per second, and to be honest, I'm not noticing it. So it's... This is pretty good. This is really good. Let's just see what the gameplay is like. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to reload. Um, yeah, shooting off screen didn't do the trick. I tried all the buttons, none of them did the trick. Um, now, I, I can reload in on the Pi 4. Now, I, I need to talk to Luther Gund about this, because uh, we do have a way to reload. And it might be a hacked version of the emulator, but... Um, so I've got some extra bullets for putting in an extra credit but I've already emptied my gun but yeah this game is playing quite well it sounds all right the animations are smooth perfectly playable it's not uh, it's not running at 60 frames it's 56 frames and uh, I can't I if it wasn't for the number at the top of the screen I wouldn't really know any different So this is pretty good, and I think that shortfall would be uh, made up for by maybe a little optimization in settings perhaps, if not then an overclock certainly would, would sort that out. Okay let's try Lethal Enforcers 2. Uh, again this is another one like Point Blank 3 that we can play on the Pi 4 but we need to play it in an earlier version of MAME. I think we use um, 2003 plus. But saying current MAME, yeah, this doesn't run very well at all in current MAMES, but, uh, but this is looking good. It says a solid 60 frames in the top right corner. And it plays exactly as I would expect it to play. Uh, yeah, there are no problems with this at all. So this is good. This is very good. Alright, that's enough of Lethal Enforcers 2. Uh, what's left? Oh yes, Operation Tiger. I wanted to see how this goes, and considering how Time Crisis 2 went, I have no hope at all for this. So Operation Tiger will load up on a Pi 4, but um, you can't play it. It is a slideshow. Rather than thinking of it in terms of frames per second, uh, really you should be thinking of it in terms of seconds per frame. Because, like I said, it's a slideshow. Anyway, I'm skipping ahead to the gameplay and I'll join you there. All right, here we go. Now, the calibration was at nine frames per second, so that, you know, if that's just the calibration screen, what is the game going to be like? And even now, on this Taito logo screen it's 10 frames and i oh here we go it's fading out at last <laughs> 10 frames per second at least it's 10 frames per second and not 10 seconds per frame now 
Now putting these coins in is tough. I'm just mashing the the coin button as much as I can. Um, but uh, but it's just taking a while to get the coins in because it's just not responding very quickly. I'll skip ahead to the actual gameplay. All right, as you can see, this doesn't look good at all. Um, yeah, so this is coming up at nine and a half frames per second. It's an improvement on the performance on the Pi 4, but this is terribly unplayable. Uh, it's so slow, you can't even hear any sound. There's no audio. All right, so we've tried out quite a variety of systems and games. We've tried out GameCube and Wii, which we can't have at all on the Pi 4. We've tried Saturn, that um, that you can load on the Pi 4, but you just 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 so slow it's unplayable. Uh, and we've tried a whole bunch of arcade games that uh, that aren't aren't particularly great on the Pi 4, just to see. Uh, what would happen and we've had quite a good mixture we've had GameCube and um, Wii games that run really well and we've had GameCube games and Wii games that don't run that well but probably could be improved on the Saturn runs absolutely perfectly absolutely can't fault the Saturn in any way and, uh, and as for MAME there are improvements in MAME the range of games I tried uh, some of them work really well and some of them, well, they weren't going to work at all. Like Operation Tiger was never going to work. Time Crisis 2 was never going to work. But Time Crisis is, is pretty close to working and it it can work with some optimization. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was interesting and maybe a little bit refreshing from some of the other videos that you might have seen where you just don't get any new information. Uh, this is actually a real practical test for what the Pi 5 um, can do at this early stage in the uh, development cycle. If you enjoyed it, consider hitting the like button, maybe leave a comment, tell me what you think. Do you have a Pi 5? Are you looking to get one? Uh, what are you hoping to get out of a Pi 5? Uh, yeah, start a conversation. And uh, if you're willing, if you want to see more from me in the future, uh, maybe subscribe, consider that. Um, I do a lot of gameplay videos on real hardware and every now and then I do something like this where I look at something new um, or review some hardware, something like that. But uh, hopefully see you again soon. Goodbye.